The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we just want to thank you for the doorway that Yeshua has opened through the blood. Thank you that it's not just the doorway in, but it's so much dimensions that has opened because of that light that has been switched on for us to go into. We honor and worship and magnify Yeshua. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son for us to begin to understand the power of the light that we operate in as we go through the blood, through the veil, into the kingdom of heaven, beginning to understand and have revelation of the fact that we are operating beyond the veil, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, beginning to understand that you have given us dominion and authority over multiple amounts of places kingdoms, realms, dimensions that you have seated us because of the position that we have in you, my Father, that we are co with you, that you have opened up our hearts and you have poured into us revelation, wisdom, knowledge, your presence, your glory, your image. Father, we are seated on thrones within the kingdoms. We are occupying mountains. You have given us kingdoms to run. And we're beginning to understand uh, that we are also the gates and the doors. That we are the keys for much of what needs to begin to function as it was destined to. As it's waiting for sons and daughters to ignite. We begin to understand that it is up to us. Engaging into you, loving you, worshipping you magnifying you but also living in the spirit shifting from the natural and operating from out of the kingdom of heaven legislating that glory that presence that revelation inside that wisdom that knowledge into the earth into all of creation and bringing things into alignment father in this time and season that we're in we're beginning to understand the power that we have at hand the fiery flames of the burning ones the sons of light the daughter of, of light that's working from out of the kingdom of heaven projecting the full glory of Yahweh into the earth because of the place that we have residence at. Could we love and move and have our being in you and from out of you, that place of glory, we love and legislate that into the earth. Father, it is changing the place of the nations. And we just want to honor you and praise you that we can be part of this right now. It's incredible, Lord. We thank you, my Father. You are a beautiful, awesome, majestic God. We thank you, Father, that we're beginning to understand the recreative power of the blood of Yeshua. That your word even goes as far as to tell us that if you eat of me, drink of me, you will live forever. And we begin to understand that it is actually a change of DNA. It is a whole dimension of recreation that takes place as we engage in worship and adoration as we engage into who you are and we begin to soak in your glory father we love you it's like the father is speaking into place tonight a dimension of rest for the ecclesia, a place where we'll begin to understand that he has got our backs, that he has given us an insight and a dimension of his glory that is in and around and surrounding us, that we can carry with us everywhere we go, that will protect us, that will not just protect us, but because we begin to understand who we are, that dimension of his glory that we carry will literally overshadow the earth as we begin to understand as, as spirit beings that we have the ability to overshadow our nation, to overshadow our cities, our states, begin to understand that we can overshadow our families, we get to understand that we can overshadow our schools and our workplaces and our own businesses. We get to overshadow those we love and care for because the spirit of man 
loves and moves and has its being in Christ and the full capacity of the presence of Yahweh and the glory of Yahweh is in my spirit as I bring it into full fruition, legislating that ability to overshadow the, the, that which I love, that which I care for in the earth with the glory and the fire of Yahweh. It aligns and changes everything. We're beginning to understand what it means to be an oracle. One who only speaks and breathes when Yahweh says go. Father, we love your presence. We love you. You're majestic. You're beautiful. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you, my King. Thank you for everything you do, Yahweh. Thank you that we can step into you through the yard, the hay, the bath, the hay. We can begin to understand what that means and what it represents. Thank you, my King. We love you, Yahweh. We love you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Oh, there we have a lack of Lara, Lara Maya. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> How you guys doing? Great. How weird was it not to have spirit school yet yeah. last week? Yeah. Did you guys be yelling yeah. at uh, Hadat Yeshua? Yeah. Yeah. It was good, it was nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. We had a good time. My wife was away for a couple of days, uh, quite a couple of days, 11, 12 days. So I was home alone with the kiddies. So it was it's nice to be with them, but it was terrible to be without her. <laughs> um, but it was good. It's over now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She's home. <laughs> And everything back to normal. Whew. Okay, so we're just going to carry on with uh, teachings on the blood. And really, I want you to keep yourself open for everything that I say because it's, it's really designed to take you to a deeper place. Right? It's designed to have you have revelation regarding what the blood of Yeshua is and understanding that the intensity of it is not on this side of the veil. On this side of the veil, it's just gooey blood, <laughs> right? And it, it, it really, it has no significance on this side of the veil. Now, you might say, well, you can't say that. The blood of Yeshua has got excessive <clears throat> significance, yes, of course. But on this side of the veil, it's just blood. When you step in and you begin to understand what the blood has done, the revelation that comes beyond the veil, where you begin to understand that everything that you are, Everything that you were designed to be from the very beginning has its, its uh, residence, has its restoration in the blood. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, you go on the journey to, as a spirit being, go into the blood and begin to understand what the blood represents and what it brings you to. Yeah. It's eating of him, drinking of him. Yeah. And now you understand, if you cannot eat of him without taking in of the blood. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the Bible gives us all kinds of verses about eating and drinking. He said, please, in remembrance of me, find yourself constantly yeah. eating and drinking yeah. of me. Now, yeah. we understand that it's not vampirism, mm -hmm. right? right? We're not yeah. drinking his blood. We're not right. physically drinking his blood. It's nothing on this side of the veil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on that side of the veil where my spirit man engages into him. That's where we understand the yard, the hay, the vath, the hay, the yard, the hay, the shin, the yeah. vath, the, the, yeah. the living letters. That I engage, I go into and I begin to understand that as I go into these letters, it's the eating and drinking of Him. Yeah. It's the living Word that came out of Him that also lives inside of Him. Uh, it's a dimension of the kingdom of the Yahweh that's within Him that we get to engage. That's why everything we engage in Him is to propel us to a deeper level in Him, is to give us greater revelation and insight. And of course, that's all what the blood has propelled me into. It takes me into a dimension of the light. Matter of fact, I go in through the blood, which is light. We begin to understand that it's congealed light, and we get to go in through it, and within the light, there's portholes that takes us into different sections in the kingdom of heaven. I love that. Hallelujah. Tonight, we're touching base on the ability of the blood to recreate. For this is the will of my Father. That everybody who beholds the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise Him up at the last days. It's for us to begin to understand, just to remind ourselves that eternal life is in Yeshua. 
But it's not in Yeshua as we perceive it. It is in what he did. Because Yeshua is my example. Again, I get to live in him. That's why I died in him and I was resurrected in him. Right, right. He died as me, not for me. So I begin to understand that now that I have the ability and the access in through mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. I have all that the Father has always designed for me. So yeah. when my name was called yeah. and I um, read what he said on my scroll and I agreed to it and I breathed, and I was breathed into my mother's womb, I begin to realign things into place because as a son, I begin to operate in the full capacity, right? Yeah, that's right. right. But it's about the eating and the drinking. We carry on. It says, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that, no, so that um, one may eat of it and die, and not die. I am the living bread that comes down out of heaven. If anybody eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also, uh, which I give for the life of the world, the world is my flesh. Just beginning to understand that, of course, it's not... Him physically feeding us with who he is right. as, as a bodily being right. but as a spirit being and how he is the fullness of Yahweh that's where the Shin comes in the Yad the Hay the Vat yeah. yeah. because it is the fullness of Yeshua and what he carries and who he is as the son which I engage into and he is the gate and he's the door so when I'm in him everything is open yeah. and I get to yeah. understand and have revelation of who my father is yeah. because he says uh, you have to enter in through the Holy Spirit to get to all the knowledge that I want to give you regarding who I am. You have to get into me to get all the knowledge that you need regarding who my Father is so you can have the fullness of who He is. And then, of course, once you're in, all three, you begin to understand the fullness of who He is in the four faces. You begin to have the revelation out of the lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man. You begin to, begin to understand the ability that we have as the beings that the Father has created us to be. It is more than what we have experienced up to this point. So the eating and the drinking of Him is there, and it's designed to change your DNA. And I've said this many times, this was never designed to be this. But if you look at, at Adam, and what I love about saying that is that we can now physically go back into the yeah. kingdom of heaven. We can go back into our timeline. We can go look at the creation as it happens, just like Moses did. How many understand that? Yeah. Yeah. And in your experience of looking at Yahweh creating how Adam was designed, not to have a physical body like what we perceive, but a fully glorified body in its full extent. Yeah. Yeah. And the blood restored me to that place. Where I begin to understand the restoration is not as what I have right now. The restoration is a glorified body that lives in my spirit with my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why if you eat of me and drink of me, you will live forever. Everlasting life. Now you might say, well, that's eternal life. No, that's not eternal life. You go read and do a study on the difference between eternal life and everlasting life. He's saying that I will give you immortality. They may say, well, that's just ridiculous. You will die. You will die. I don't care who you are. You're going to die. Well, that's what you believe. And the fact of the matter is you believe, and what you believe, you receive. I mean, I know that's a really old saying, but uh, it's still true, right? If you doubt, you go without. If you believe, you will receive. <laughs> I feel like a poet. So to them, truly, truly, this is what he says in John 6, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. John, uh, it says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourself. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, um, he also will live because of me. This is the bread which uh, came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Yes. Uh, it's slightly different than uh, everlasting. Uh, this is slightly different than uh, uh, eternal life, uh, the gift of life as a born again Christian. Right, right. I believe that his desire for us through the blood. Is to begin to understand how it's meant and designed and created to change your DNA. Yes. 
And I know how crazy it sounds, but I've been taking communion now. When I started with these revelations about seven years ago, I started taking communion every single day. Um, several times. Matter of fact, I bought, those, uh, bought a box of hundred of those little cups. And I always said, to be honest, no one even knows what it is. Well, you know it's not real juice. You know it's definitely not actually something you can eat. It looks like cardboard, the little thing on top. But it represents the blood of the body. And it's really convenient. You can take it around with you. It's really cute and it's not that expensive. And I go through these uh, uh, on a monthly period. It takes three, four, five, maybe six a day just engaging. Every time I have a moment spare, if, I'm rem if I rem remember, I'll just eat it. And I will go into the spirit and do it there. Eventually, it became such a, a ritual, I would say a ritual, that almost sounds demonic. So it became such a habit. a habit that I enjoyed to do so much that I didn't need the little cup and the weird little wafer anymore. <laughs> right, right. Like, thank you, Jesus, this stuff is disgusting. <laughs> and I didn't need that anymore. Now, I, I could have just gone and bought uh, a nice wafer and nice orange juice, but in a house of, with four kids... The juice doesn't last very long, and they find a way of eating all the wafers as well. So that didn't work. But they wouldn't touch these little cups because they don't know what it is. But uh, eventually, I didn't have to. I didn't have to buy it anymore because I got to do it so many times that I could physically take my spirit into the kingdom of heaven and do a communion without having to eat or drink. Because the only reason we have to eat and drink something is really because my soul needs to understand what my spirit is engaging in. Right? That's the same reason why Yeshua had to physically come. So that we had something to look at, something to understand. The Bible says he was slain before the foundations of, of, of the time, right? Before all of creation even started, he was slain. So why did he really have to come for my soul to proceed, for my soul to see, for me to have an example? Yeah. 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 Amen. So he's desired for us to begin to understand the value of the blood and how it literally is designed because it's light. Now, it's not light like what we have here when you switch the power on, there's a light that goes on. Yeah. It is creative light. Yeah. Now, that, that is created light. Creative light is a dimension of light that comes out of Yahweh. It is a dimension of light that's in your blood. It is the light that is in the fullness of the glorified Yeshua and that which runs out of his body. The light that his blood is now. The congealed fullness which opens up gates, doors, and obviously takes us into different portions and dimensions of the kingdom of heaven. We get to shift into it and as you go in, I... I I've heard Ian say this, and I sometimes say this well because it makes almost sense. If you if you listen to it, it makes sense. It, it's going into the was before the was, was, was. Yes. It's like Thomas. We always say Thomas is the doubter, but if you think about it, he's the only one that did what he did. No one else had the guts to do it. He stuck his hand into the side of a glorified being, the first and only glorified being on the entire planet ever. He stick his whole hand in there. And I don't believe that there was any doubt. I believe that he was in right. love with Yeshua and he was right. excited right. to yeah. go in. <laughs> and I might be wrong, but it changed his life. Yeah. Now we get to go in there. We get to live in there. And of course, now this is not uh, any fact that I can state on this is Google um, revelation. <laughs> but uh, according to history, um, Thomas's arm never deteriorated. Wow. The arm that went into the side of Yeshua never deteriorated. As a matter of fact, uh, he went to India, and in this time he did the most incredible um, miracles, signs, and wonders. As a matter of fact, he literally brought revival to India. Yes. Now how we don't understand the power of somebody that has been in the fullness of Yahweh, that's that eating and drinking of Him, yeah. going in and having Him become one with you as you become one with Him, and vice versa. Yeah. It changes everything that you are. Now, uh, previously we could only do that by faith, and we can only do it by a receiving of a revelation or an understanding. On this side of the veil, we can receive something that someone shared with us, someone told us that that's a good understanding to have, it's a good revelation to run in. But now that we are spirit beings, we begin yes. to understand that the, the rebirth of who I originally yeah. am, yeah. I get to physically go there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. I get to physically experience going into the was before the was was was. Yahweh echoes uh, uh, from, from the kingdom of heaven into creation and says, My blood carries within it the ability to recreate. 
your genes are recreated. Your DNA is recreated through the process of exchange so that we can agree together and live in union. We remind ourselves that, that the side of Yeshua was pierced and blood and water came out. And of course we understand that blood and water equals both. Now that opening in, his, in, in the spirit realm created a, a gate for me to go in. That's why I'm seated in Christ. And I'm seated in Christ in heavenly places. So whether I believe I'm there or not, the fact is that I'm there. Right. Mm -hmm. But the idea the Father has about regarding eating and drinking and becoming in union with Him is that I not just go in there, I live there, and I physically have the understanding that my spirit's in Him. Yeah. And of course the desire of the Father is to eventually have your soul and your body go in there as well. Yeah. Right. It says the blood can create body parts. It can recreate broken down structures of the soul. Now, how many of you understand that we need, now, now I, am, I have no problem with laying on hands for sick and, uh, and sickness and disease. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, we don't need to do it in spirit school because it's school. Right. I want to teach you something that you have to go and get engaged right. at home. Right. It's not for the corporate, but it's for corporate. It's for you individually to go right. engage and become the mature son and daughter that Father has called you yeah. to be. So I have no problem with laying, uh, laying on of hands and praying for the sick. But how many, understand, how many of you understand, if there is a dimension that I can engage, um, that literally recreates in me, to bring me to a place of complete healing, where the insides is, you know, have you ever heard of Bonnie, uh, Bonnie, Bobby Connor? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess he's about 65 years old, I don't want to make him older than what he is. I honor him and I love him and he doesn't know me and I don't really know him but but he went for a um, medical check and he engages in these things at a very dimensional level and he went for a medical check in his internal organs and they were freaked out they said that he has the internal organs of an Olympic athlete yes, Lord. <laughs> um, That's incredible. It makes me think of Caleb at 85 being stronger than what he was when he was 40. Yeah. Now they say that at about 40 you can reach your peak in strength. Now for me personally, I remember when I was about 26, that's when you were literally at your testosterone high. Your bones have stopped growing. You are no longer grow in height. You've stopped growing in depth. Your bones are as hard as what they would ever be. And you basically at the strongest point in your life physically than what you'd ever be. And I remember my days because in those days I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing professional bodybuilding, but I was a strong man and I was doing a professional wrestling. I was doing all kinds of activities. I was I remember being part of a fight club. Uh, it sounds very aggressive, but it wasn't quite like that. It was more like a... Um, like games what was playing, you know, people had to run through you, you had to kind of block them. It was just a, there was contenders and there was a warrior. And they would, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. But the body was put to a, an extreme test. So now I look at myself 40 years later, I've been in the gym training heavy, heavy weights every day of my life for 30 years, 28 years. And I look at myself at 43 and I've got no aches, no pains. Wow. My body is stronger today as what it was when I was 26 years old. Wow. Yes. Now, I don't say that I, I don't eat as wonderful as what I could. You know, I don't look after my body as what I might have. You know, I mean, I look after my body more than most people. But, I mean, I eat all kinds of stuff. I do things that I know I shouldn't do with my body. But because I believe I have engaged into the was before the was was was, I've gone in to the fullness of Yahweh, eating of Him, drinking of Him, going through the blood, beginning to engage in the different dimensions within the blood. Things is changing in my DNA. Yeah. 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 You know, I know it sounds crazy. I look at a wedding photo of myself and my wife, and I look exactly the same as what I did then. You know, I look at my mirror and the face. My, my, I look at my face in the mirror, and I've got a beard. I never used to have a beard. I always just used to have a small little bulky beard that was like very <laughs> finely trimmed. And I still look at myself thinking, how the heck did you do that? But um, <laughs> uh, I've always had laugh lines in my face. So that never changed. Even when I was a little kid, I had these laugh lines in my face and stuff. Yeah. So it's not even wrinkles. So things are just changing. Because I believe as we engage and eat of Him, the DNA structure in your body changes. 
because that's the recreated being that he is aligning. It recreates body parts. It recreates broken uh, structures of the soul. I don't you understand. Satan has the ability to take off your soul. Because he aligns himself with a belief system you've run with, and then he begins to take from you according to what you believe. And the blood has the ability to re bring restoration to your soul, the way you, your, your will, your mind, and your emotions. It can enter into the cracks and uh, crevices and renew and rebuild. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. You know, not, not for my body, for my soul, for my being, for all that I am, financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Let the blood flow through me, Allah. Engage it with every part of your being. That's why all of this is incorporated in the courts of heaven, in the mobile court, and it's in your authority and your dominion and who you are. <coughs> the blood can go into the memory banks of your heart and the processes of your soul and reform and recreate and make uh, it new and fresh. <laughs> you know, they say, um, I know, we all want to be like they, because they know everything. It's not even Google, it's they. <laughs> but, but they say that your heart, as a matter of fact, um, there's a, a, a website called heart, heartmath.org. Heartmath it basically, scientifically, it's been proven yeah. that your heart's a better thinking organism than your brain. Yes. Yeah. And of course, the heart is the one who pumps all the blood through into your, the rest of your body. Wow. We begin to understand that your DNA has a record yes. of all that you are, all that you could be, should be, would be, all that you have done, shouldn't have done, did, and might still do. Your blood has record of all of that. Wow. And of course, we have understood from the first couple of teachings, your blood is also congealed light. And it's not the light that we have uh, from the sun, because that's creative light. It's creative light that runs through your being because of the fact that we are in the image of Yahweh. And He is a dimension of creative light that goes beyond what we can fathom understand. So he has the ability, that's why we as a homo sapien, which is the only being created in his image, have the ability to literally expel all darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even understand, and this is it's really a weird statement to make, but unless I know my authority when it comes to me being the light, I will not expel darkness. And a matter of fact, darkness can still overshadow although I am light. Because it's in revelation, it's in knowing. And that, that comes from eating and drinking all that is available within him, going into him. That's why the veil was torn. That's why the access into the kingdom of heaven is key to everything the Father wants for us right now. If the legislation of what is needed in the earth is brought into full fruition, it will be because of the access we have through the blood of Yeshua. Amen. Yes, yes. Memories are like kinks in the DNA strand, which can form mutations of the original plan. So one's ability to walk upright and maintain a forward uh, thrust of motion is obstructed. Did, did that make sense to you? Let me read it again. Memories are like kinks in the DNA strand which can form mutations. Yeah. Now, remind yourself of the things you've gone through that you've dealt with. But because it's in your DNA, yeah. it has already formed a kink in who yeah. you are. Right. It has stopped and it shifts so it will become eventually an obstacle in your life. That's just right. logic stuff. Right. Yeah. Now, engaging into the blood as it changes and realigns your DNA, it takes out those kinks yeah. and removes the obstacles. Right. Now, it goes hand in hand with all that is available for us to engage. 
Because how many of you understand, engaging with the angelic removes obstacles. Yeah. Because there's angels designed out there to remove the obstacles yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we engage in the Holy Spirit and we begin to understand the fullness of the glory of, 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 uh, of the Holy Spirit and what He does when we go into Him. There is a dimension of consuming fire that re refines in us the, the things that needs to be taken out. You know, if you, if you look at everything we've taught over the last five years in this class, it's really one big picture of portions and things that we have to engage at, at different aspects and different dimensions and realms. But really, as it all comes together, it's one big picture that we have to engage. Memories are often so... Um, Okay. Memories are often so buried because of pain. That's what we do, right? Yeah. So I, I look at my life. Uh, there's things that happened in my life that were so traumatizing that I just shut it down. There's some things that in my in my life that happened that I literally uh, removed the memory of. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, understand. Although I removed the memory, it's still there. Of course, we do that because of pain. That they are hidden away in iron <clears throat> caskets instead of being brought to the light to be washed and refreshed and the DNA to be restored to God's original plan and beyond. Because let me tell you something that I love about Yahweh. His original plan for what we're meant to look like changes daily. But you say, well, God doesn't change. Well, see, he releases a certain dimension of who you are right. into the creation. Once you reach the point where you believe that, he can show you more. Right. Okay. He can't show you more until you believe what he's revealing to you. That's why we only have revelation up to a certain point, and then we can't go deeper because we can't perceive it. But when we begin to operate beyond the veil, my spirit has the capacity to receive everything the Father makes available for me to go into. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It changes everything. It just literally ignites the dimension within who we are that opens everything up. God's plan for each one is so high and so great that the revelation of it to each individual could not necessarily lead to pride. <laughs> but would lead to the fear of being proud and thus the plan is aborted. Listen, the Father has looked at your life, and you looked at your life. Yeah. And what you see is an absolute drop in the bucket. Right. What the Father sees is something that we can't even fathom. Yeah. We, you look at yourself and say, well, my name is Gustav. I have a wife, and I've got four kids. Um, we live by faith. We're in full-time ministry. Uh, we miss our family in South Africa and our friends. We... Uh, go through all kinds of stuff, we're struggling with certain things in this nation, there's some things lacking, there's some things that we would love to have more of, um, I have great destiny, the Father has given me some responsibility in the Spirit, but in, in reality that's what I see. Yeah. When the Father looks at me, He sees me as His Son. That's right. He sees me as uh, the same in image as what He is. Yeah. Now I can't say that. Because if I say, I am God like He is, then everybody is coming against me and think I'm crazy. How dare you say that? Yet the reality is, if my dad is God, then I'm a God. Now that's just a very small portion of what I'm trying to touch base on. Because we don't even understand what that would possibly mean. Because if I am in His image, is everyone in His image? Now let me tell you something, everyone's not in His image. If you're not a born again Christian, you're not in His image. Because His image is not this. But Yeshua became like us. So he, can, he became our image. So that we can be transformed into His image. Which is not this. It's something completely different. That's why the old man, not your dad, not your husband, <laughs> has to die. And the new has to be erected. Now the new has never been. So it's a creation that is beyond what we've ever experienced or began to fathom. It's a dimension of God in the earth that erects and aligns everything. 
but it happens beyond the veil. It's a spirit being that knows who it is, that has the ability to expand itself in the earth, and wherever it touches its feet, that place again belongs to him as it was meant to be from the very beginning. That's right. The Father has waited 2,000 years for us. He's waiting for us. Who, who on earth is, who are we? Even the angel said, who are these people? Who are these created things that, that he's so mindful of them? Well, they, they know who we are. The demons know who, they, who we are. God knows who we are. All of creation is waiting for us. The creation knows who we are, but we don't know who we are. <laughs> so the Father wants you to understand what, what, what is the plan for your life. That you, you can't have pride, because that's what we do. Oh, that can't be me. I can't be all of that. Oh, yes, I can. Amen. <laughs> We begin to understand that we have been, we've been muzzled. There's a word like that. We've been muzzled. The sound has been taken out of us through um, demonic trading, through church leaders, and then the revelation that they give us is a half a truth. And I don't know if you understand, half a truth will lead to complete death, not half death. Because a white lie is still a lie. But I'm going to understand it's in the motivation mm -hmm. of what you're presenting. Mm -hmm. Because Yahweh looks at Rahab, the prostitute, yeah. lying like a dog right. and saying her action was righteous. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So did our leaders lie on purpose? Mm -hmm. I don't think they did. They didn't. Mm -hmm. They only shared and taught right. what they knew. Right. But yeah. sense of omission is still sense. Yeah. There's a generation that begins to understand that we have to align the things that were spoken because those bumps and kicks in our DNA is affecting us today. Because we're still going to die. We still want to die. We still believe that we have to die. But I can't read that anymore in the Word. There was a curse in the Old Testament saying that now man will only live for 120 years. Okay, well, the blood of Yeshua restored me into a whole nother covenant. Yes. Hallelujah. It just changes everything. <laughs> we want to ask God if He can look at the plan for your life through the filter of His blood. And that you, in that you will see uh, and know that you are looking at absolute truth. Because when you look through the Father's eyes and who you are, you see a greater destiny and purpose than what you can ever look at when you yeah. see it through your own perception. Yeah. Yeah. That's why everything we do, we want to do it out of the four faces of Yahweh. We want to look at the ox as the apostolic and that dimension of the apostolic, not the fivefold apostolic. Right. We're looking at the eagle and we'll go through the eagle and we begin to understand the dimension of the prophetic yeah. as an oracle and how we need to speak uh, yeah. as sons and daughters of the Yahweh out of yeah. that dimension of his face. Yeah. We're looking at the man which represents the priest. Okay. We begin to understand who we are mm -hmm. in the mobile court, who we are in the court system, that we are established as high priests, that we can have the ability to have the Father judge us yeah. through the blood of yeah. Yeshua. And the judgment through me purifies the nation that I'm praying for. Yes, yes. One man, one man can enter into the courts right. yeah. Yeah. and the accusations made yeah. against the nation can be nullified. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because one of us has the ability to destroy yeah. all powers and principalities. Yep. Yep. Yes. That's all he wanted. Just one man. Just step into the gap. Just step in. Yeah. Because yeah. when the accuser come and there's no one there, whatever the accusations are will be put in fruition. Yeah. 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 But when a one with dominion and authority over yeah. the earth steps into the court, yeah. Satan's accusations are instantly nullified. Right. Yeah. Of course, we enter in through the blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love that. I think it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. As you continually walk in access of the blood of Yeshua, 
you and your divine destiny will melt into each other. And I, thought, I remind you, when I say you're walking in the blood of Yeshua, it's intimacy. It's walking in intimacy, loving on Him, worshiping Him, presenting yourself to Him as a living sacrifice daily, constantly finding yourself in worship. Now, again, when I say constantly finding yourself in worship and in prayer, I'm not saying set aside times in your busy day when you're in your closet worshiping Yahweh. It's you preparing and being prepared in such a manner that you can be at work and in the Spirit. That you can be in the car and in the Spirit. You can have a fight with your wife and be in the Spirit. You can have a fight with your husband and be in the Spirit. You can scream at your kids and be in the Spirit. I'm talking out of experience here. That you're engaging constantly. You know, I, I shared this many times. I'll share it again. There's, there's two things that I've done in my life that affected me excessively. Uh, one of them was I set my alarm on my phone on snooze for every 10 minutes for 365 days. That's one year. Every single 10 minutes my alarm went off and it reminded me to pray in tongues. And so for a whole year that's what I did and the idea was to constantly have me reminded to be praying in tongues. Yes. It became a habit and that's what I do almost all day long. And then the second thing was to activate the kingdom of heaven in everything I do. Walking through a door. Sitting on a chair, putting on my clothes, putting on my shoes, yeah. going into a room, coming out of a room, stepping yeah. into my car, stepping out of my car, yeah. going into the kingdom, stepping out of the kingdom, stepping into Christ, stepping out of Christ, yeah. uh, doing that, that physical things that reminds me of what I'm physically doing. My spirit's constantly engaging, my spirit's constantly activated and active in the kingdom of heaven, but my soul is the one with the glitch in its download. So my soul has to be triggered to have an understanding of what my spirit's doing. That's why soaking is also key, but I can't soak the whole day. That's right. That's, right. Right. That's why we need triggers in our day to take us into the spirit. Yes. And of course, the idea is that soul and spirit uh, work together and go into the kingdom of heaven together. Yes. So that when that engagement becomes vivid and it changes your belief system. Yes. Woo. No lie can live in the blood of Yeshua. He is the truth, the life and the way, and you will find truth. Uh, reality of life, you will find the reality of life and the, the way made open to you as you stay within the realms of the blood. Now, I remind you that if you begin to understand within the blood of Yahweh, within the blood of Yeshua, it's not blood like what we perceive it to be. Right? I say blood and everyone's like, it's the red stuff. But it's not the red stuff. Right. It's what Yahweh is. He consists of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he says, I'm light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is who he is. Yeah. Yeah. It's the light that I live in. It's the light that I move in. It's that dimension of light that takes me yeah. from the natural into the supernatural. That takes me out of time and space. Yeah. It's the understanding of operating in the light that gives me the authority over the sun and the moon. It gives me the authority as a son, as a daughter, to run and legislate yeah. the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. Because when a son walks the earth, mm -hmm. darkness has to flee. Yeah. Yeah. Now please, yeah. don't misunderstand me. I, I'm, uh, I'm only talking about who we are, what, what right. you are as a son. This does not exclude Yeshua. Right. I do nothing and I can do nothing yeah. in the earth outside yeah. of Yeshua. I do nothing outside yeah. of intimacy and relationship with Him. Right. Yeah. But He doesn't want to do it. Right. And for the, not, not like he doesn't want to do it. Oh, I'm up, I, no, I'm, I'm chilling on my, on my sleeper couch. I don't want to do this now. You do it. That's not the idea. He's given us dominion and authority. Yeah. So his character as, as, as the Father, which is justice, judgment, and mercy, yeah. he's, his, his hand in it is not to go and do it. Yeah, that's right. And, and I'm talking out of experience. Um, please pick up your clothes. Okay, I'll do it, Dad. Five minutes later. I asked you an half an hour ago, five minutes ago, pick up your clothes. Yeah, I'm going to pick up my clothes. Dad. Pick up now! Eventually, I come back and the clothes are still there. What do I do? I pick up the clothes myself. Because I'm going to kill this child. But Yahweh will never do that. <laughs> Yahweh would never do that. See, that's, that's, that's not the signs of a good father. <laughs> because I'm not teaching my son anything. Now, it could have been my daughter. I'm not speaking of one specific. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly it happens with the little ones. Yeah. Because I can scream extremely loud at the older ones, and they're like, okay, fine, we'll do it. 
But the little ones are like, and then she'll run to her room. And Kieran, Eden, my youngest one, he'll just ignore me flat. Like, you're crazy, Jared. You do it. I threw it there because I own this joint. But Yahweh, Yahweh, because it's justice and judgment, he wants us to do it. So creation is left for us to complete. He never said that he finished creation at the seventh day. He said that he took a rest. <laughs> but because he established the fullness. Not, not rest like, oh, I'm so tired, let me take a break. He rests because of the establishment of the sons and daughters in the earth, breathing them into place, establishing them in the dimension that they have to now govern. And he's been waiting ever since. Because we're scapaflers. Matter of fact, we're Olympic scapaflers. <laughs> I know, right? The blood will recreate you. Straighten and strengthen your DNA. I love the straightening thing. Alignment is really, I would almost go as far as to say that's exactly what Yahweh is really doing in the earth right now. If I have to think of the galactic council and what's happening in the earth right now, there's alignment taking place. So with alignment, there's removing, there's uh, pushing aside, there's, there's reestablishing. This is pushing and pulling and tugging and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So, you know, the frustration, irritation, yeah. financial explosion, yeah, financial decrease there. There's things, uh, losing 10 friends, gaining to one friend, but that one friend's better than all 10 that I had. This right. stuff right. being pushed and pulled away, and it's a little bit confusing and yeah. frustrating, yeah. but that's what alignment that's does. Right. That's that's right. Right. Straightening it out, straightening out your DNA. Yeah, that's why we don't yeah. cut off DNA, right? Yeah, that's right? I don't want to cut off your DNA. You need to, and if your DNA has been cut off, you need to re reattach that thing. Yeah. Because there's too much in your DNA that is part of your destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Because whatever your bloodline did not achieve flows down into your bloodline, yeah. into, your, into your life. Yeah. I look at my father, I look at his father, I look at his father. What they did not achieve runs down to the one that says, I'm doing all of it. You didn't want it, I'm taking your portion, his yeah. portion, and his portion, and I'm adding it to mine. Yeah. You cut that bloodline off, then there's nothing. Yeah, there's right. nothing in the, in the generation that belongs to you. Yeah. And of course, remind you, it goes through the light, and it's realigned, and everything that it was meant to be, it is. All the perversion, all the destruction, all the notification yeah. of the enemy that has had so much hand in it, is aligned, and it's propelled forward again for yeah. you to, to, to prosper. Makes you abundant, uh, 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 it abundantly prepares you uh, for your destiny and all that is involved with your life. And the Father wants you to literally try Him in this. Go in and experience it, eat of Him daily, continuously, as often as you can. As a matter of fact, what I'm doing now is that every meal I'm having communion. And of course, because it's bigger than a normal small portion of communion, com communion. Okay, thank you, Chief. I'm inventing new words. I'm eating, having, I'm having communion. I'm having communion, um, like my entire meal is, is, is communion. That changes everything. Because I'm constantly busy engaging and eating of Him. It's His heartbeat for us. We close with this. It says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. A new creature meaning the old, the, the new, the newest one that's never been before. Yeah. It's the new that can do things greater than what he did. Right. Yeah. All, behold, all things, uh, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, yeah. There's a dimension of the new that the Father is reflecting. You know, for the last two weeks, if you guys can remember the last time we met, I had an engagement with uh, an angel called New Order and a female angel called Glory. And the way they work together and what they've done, they've been with me for the last two weeks to all the meetings, done things in the cities. They have brought alignment and established a new order. Now, it's not seen per se as of yet, but we'll see a change very quickly. And of course, all the other things that's been done in the spirit by yeah. some of you and uh, other churches and ministries and people, uh, bring, brought, bring, bring things for the nation into place yes. and the new order is what the ecclesia is beginning to walk in and step in and the glory 
that she brings and carries comes from sons and daughters operating in the kingdom of heaven, legislating their full, the fullness of the kingdom into yeah. the earth as we open and expand our spirit beings yeah. and lives in him. Yeah. It changes everything. Let's stand. Father, we just want to honor you and praise you and worship you. Thank you, Yeshua, for your blood. Thank you that we can enter in and we begin to understand the port holes. We begin to understand the keys, the gates, the doors that's within it. We begin to understand the fullness of the restoration that takes place, the old man dying and the new man erected. We're beginning to understand, Father, who we are because of what you've done. We're beginning to understand, Father, the light and the fullness of it, the capacity of change, the alignment in our bodies, the alignment in our DNA, the propulsion into the everlasting life. That we begin to understand that we are not created to die. We are created to be glorified. We are created to align our bodies and our souls and our spirit in its full capacity according to the legislation that we bring from the kingdom of heaven into the earth, which is the fullness of life, abundant life, Zoe life, the God life. We're beginning to understand who we are. We begin to understand what you have changed in us through the blood as we eat of you and drink of you. Father, I ask you in the name of Yeshua that in this room everyone will have the full revelation of what it means to uh, take communion, to eat of you, to drink of you, Father. We will begin to understand what it means to engage the deeper level with you. You know what I want you to do right now? I want you to imagine yourself in the kingdom of heaven. I want you to see it. And I want you to, like, like what you would usually do, you would take the bread, you would eat it, and you would let it go, you would chew it, you would let it go down your throat. Your soul has the understanding that it's going into your system. Your body digests it and it sends it into the blood. Just do the same with the drink. <coughs> I want you to find yourself with Yeshua. I want you to just shift into Him. Shift into Him in the spirit to such a degree that you can feel His bones melting in with yours. His blood beginning to run through your veins. Allow, allow Him to change your DNA as you engage in Him. As you begin to feel who He is in and over you as he begins to to literally replenish your being your dna but in aligning it physically healing your body your every part of you from your lungs your heart your kidneys <coughs> your thyroid your brain your your lower back your upper back your spine muscles your knees your joints feel it feel him work in your body Feel him change through the power of his blood, your DNA. Let him change your physical body. Let him breathe that glorious healing dimension into you. Remind yourself of the healing power of the blood of Yeshua. Become one with him. And let him overshadow you constantly. Father, we love you. We praise you. We glorify and worship your holy name, the King. You're majestic. We love you. We honor you. Thank you, my king. Thank you. Amen.